demonstrate how, on a smaller scale, you can introduce rapid prototyping to any design process. Uh, to tell you a little bit about myself, I work for Concordia Tech Products, and we supply window furniture to the UK market. So, independence, DIY chains, uh, and uh, brands like John Lewis, being key. Uh, our rapid prototyping turnover is nowhere near like you've just heard. Uh, to give you an idea, over the last 12 months, we spent £7,000 on prototyping. So the amount we spend doesn't really matter. Uh, we've just bought a Z Corp 450 to have in the office just to speed up the way that our design process works. So it's hard to talk about rapid prototyping without talking about rapid product development. That's the main sort of that today. So, what is rapid product development? Rapid product development, the stock answer is to speed up the time it takes to get your product to market. So, how do you achieve this? Well, I'm going to say it's, it's just the depths of what we're doing now. So, to get to the sort of point of phrase, work smarter, not harder. So to do this, everybody here should be aware of sort of what's on, on the screen. It's the best that is the design process. So start with an idea, you make that idea into a concept, you develop that concept, you sign it off, you tool it, it goes to manufacturing, then you market it, uh, and then you put it on sale. From there you have engineering changes, uh, and then eventually at the end of the product life, you will learn the type of product. Everybody here should be familiar with that. Now, what I want to do is turn that next head, really, and uh, talk about um, how to think a little more in detail about new product development and time scales. The first thing to remember, probably the most important, is that uh, to speed things up doesn't mean missing out steps in the process. Most of you will be familiar with ISO 9001 and you will be working to it. This is already in place, there's no need to pin that. It's just a different way of adapting your design process to uh, work better for you. Uh, the, the way that design is, is the process has developed over the last 10 to 15 years has evolved massively, and there's no reason, that no, matter, no matter which company you come from, why you can't evolve that process as well. And if, if it doesn't work, you can always go back to the ISO 9000, the one way that you've got set up, and it's probably been in place for about 20 years. So, how do we start working smarter? The first thing is to think about your customer. And to, again, to come in another phrase, the customer is always right. But who is your customer? Your customer might not be the end user of the product that you're designing. Your customer may be the marketing department, it may be your sales department, it may be the board of directors, or if you're working on your own, it could be you. So understanding who your customer is, is key right at the beginning. To do this, uh, once you understand who your customer is, you can understand what they actually want. The product you're designing is right for your customer. And when you've understood this, you can understand any issues or pitfalls you're going to have with your design and the process or your product all the way through. By understanding this before you even start, it will save you a lot of time later on. So, where does it all start? I'm going to suggest that most people right now have a 3D CAD package as the centre of their design product. Hence the fact I've said CAD is king. And to be a little bit controversial, I would also say CAD is free. I know it's really not, I know it costs several thousand pounds a year and you've got to pay an engineer to, to work the system as well. By free, I mean you've got the freedom to explore your product. You can make changes, uh, you can make as many changes as you want. But the important thing is, is whilst it's still in the CAD software, the changes are free. So you're not actually laying down tooling until you're happy with the, with the design. Most ideas start with a sketch. So with the sketch, forget the paper, do it straight in CAD. You can go back, you can make as many changes as you want, you can go back to the way you wanted to do it. Again, explore your designs properly. Don't be afraid to just scrap something and start again. I like to say, when it's in CAD, you've got the freedom to do anything you want. And again, time here is to build safety money later on. Okay, if CAD is king, then communication is queen. Unlock your CAD system. It's a very powerful tool. 
maximise the potential of it. Long gone are the days where you'll be sat and uh, you'll have an industrial designer doing the styling. You'll have your mechanical designers doing all the mechanics and putting your product together. And, there, and by then you'll have a separate marketing department, a separate sales team. The way that Alliance work, and certainly Integra is very good at this, is to actually combine everybody right at the beginning. So everybody has input with the design. Uh, but, I'm saying this, one thing to remember is not everybody is going to recognise what was spinning this fancy model that you're spinning around on the screen or the uh, engineering drawing that comes from it. Certainly, if you go to uh, your marketing department and you give them an engineering drawing, they won't know what you're looking at. So, how to communicate your design and CAD work across to people that aren't going to understand what they're looking at? First thing, Lose the desk. A lot of technologies have moved far enough now that your engineers don't need to be chained to their desk anymore. Uh, certainly, from here, the laptop I'm running this presentation on, uh, I can take to a customer, I can make changes to the CAD on the fly whilst I'm talking to them. In the same meeting, I can create a photorealistic rendering of the product and email it to them. And from there, I can also send the file to be printed back at the prototype machine back in the office so that it's sat on their desk when they get into work the next day. Uh, of course, the easiest way to do this is uh, visuals. There's a very quick visual on the screen by now. I have the part right in front of me if anybody wants to see it later on. But if someone samples down here, it be. Right, the next thing is uh, testing and exploring your part. Again, the communication comes in here. We've, uh, we've already heard about the, the visual side of prototypes. You can actually send your part straight from CAD to the printer, get a visual, paint it, make it all look really nice and like the finished product so you can consumer test it. You can also test it for fit and function, so your engineers can make sure that all the parts are going to fit together before the, uh, the CAD goes off to tooling. Uh, you can uh, actually do tooling trials with Apple Prototype now as well. You can offset surfaces and, to and trial your tooling before it's even left your computer. But the best thing about Apple Prototype is real life testing. Now the photo here is actually of me in Norway when I used to design kayaks and inside that boat are three rapid prototype components. They are strong enough to put up with that sort of abuse. And certainly, I wouldn't have been happy designing a boat like that that a member of the public tends to kill themselves with parts that weren't tested. So remember, there's a lot of potential for, uh, for rapid prototype. Remember, you can do all of this before you've committed to any tooling whatsoever. The other thing that you can do within your, your CAD system before you've committed to tooling and spent any time or wasted any money is you can test to see if it's strong, strong enough using a finite element analysis. You can test for airflow, flow dynamics. You can also test the tooling. And you can test for all of this before you've spent any money on tooling. Okay, so from the CAD, We've generated visions, we've generated some Apple prototypes, as we've heard. You've gained all the feedback you know, you know the product's right, you know it works, you know the tooling works, you know it's manufacturable, you know it's all going to fit together, and all of this is to be a Apple prototype. But, are you really ready to go? There's more potential for Apple prototyping than just doing product visions. How much of the tooling at this stage, once you have the new product, have you actually already created? Depending on, on the product, we've already heard that you can actually now manufacture parts straight on a 3D printer. If you're doing small volumes of, of an injection molding part, you can use a prototype, you can use a, a 3D printer to do it. Uh, another well known car manufacturer, not the one that's just been here, um, I know use uh, 3D printed dashboards and clips for airbags, and that's in production cars. Uh, something that, uh, that I'm personally trialing at the moment is to use parts from a 3D printer for the masters for sandcasting uh, 
the same testing, but lots of wax capacity. And we're also looking at creating latex molds for testing uh, resin parts straight from the 3D model. So from here, it's gone straight from the CAD, straight to the printer. And in the case of the latex, the molds for latex, the masters for the latex molds, this will take our factory six weeks to manage to do this. We printed the parts in six hours. So to give you an idea of how much time you can gain from a uh, prototype, uh, it's just, it's a lot. Oh, one last thing I forgot to mention. Something else that I'm sure if you want around the show, people will already be playing with is can you print the tools directly? This is something else that I'll be looking at hopefully within the next six months is instead of actually cutting metal tools for low volume injection molding, is can we print a model, have it uh, metal plated, and then use that as the base for a low volume, uh, low pressure injection mold plastic part? Now, I, I have to admit, in some circumstances, if you're making millions of components, the answer to everything I've just said is no, and you are going to have to commit to a, uh, uh, a skill tool for certainly injection molded components. To save more time here, do you actually really still need that fully dimensioned engineering drawing? In most cases, it's no. Most of the drawing shops now will use uh, 3D models to cut the tools direct. They, they won't even uh, sort of interrogate the drawing, they'll interrogate the 3D camera. So do you really need that full engineer drawing? And certainly, I, for the last 18 months, the answer for me is no, we just use inspection drawings. So key dimensions on a, on a product, this saves us a massive amount of time. Okay, so we're going to go back to the tooling. Whilst you're doing the tooling, uh, normally your engineer is either working on the next project or on, or sat to in the thumbs. But you already have the 3D cabinet. There is so much more potential for this model we've already invested the time in. Such as creating all the, the technical drawings for your technical documentation. Uh, you can do this, uh, and you can create marketing images via photorealistic rendering. Uh, you can also post catalogs directly to the web so your customers can see the product in 3D on their computer at home. This isn't only useful for selling the product, but useful for uh, doing customer care inquiries as well. If you've got quite a complicated product, they can take it apart on their computer on the screen at home and work out which part they need to replace it with. So, good point for my slide. Also, once the product's here and it's, it's made, it's in production, it's out to on release to the general public. This isn't the end for the end of the process for the engineer, and it's certainly not the end of the process for the prototype either. You can, end, you can ease the, the pain of engineering change uh, through a rapid prototype machine. You can now go back redesign the part that's causing the problems, print it and then fit it into the, your existing product and make sure it works before you've committed to any tooling changes. Don't be afraid to mix rapid prototype parts with real life components. It works, you can test it, you can see what it's going to look like uh, and you, know, you can put it back out there and uh, it, it's just a very good indicator of whether it's going to work or not. The last, thing, with the last thing I was going to say is uh, once we're on the, the subject of engineering changes, for parts that you already have in existence, is there the possibility of sharing them across different products? Certainly at the moment I'm working on four different ranges of products for four different customers using the same components. All of the parts, all of the uh, finished assemblies look completely different. So the point that I'm trying to make is although CAD is king, communication is key, is queen. So you can, with the help of prototyping, all these models do so much more than just visualizations. 